everybody good with this? Uh, you know what we should do uh, to finish up on this color accuracy. Let's can we go to like a reverse gray pattern and I'll we'll look at neutral gray. We could do a reverse gray. We could do reverse gray, uh, color, low color, high color. Uh, well, first I want to do the gray because I want to actually go in and take like green on a panel and drive it up so that I can show what a grayscale that's incorrectly set looks like. Sure. Remember we were talking about how important scale, yeah. getting gray correct is before we add the color on because if, if the grayscale is not calibrated correctly then the color will also not look correct. Um, everybody hang in there. I know that looking at test patterns is rather boring. <laughs> but, uh, we will get to some moving material. But there's some pink ones, they're not really gray. Yeah, no, that, that's going to show you some errors in the grayscale tracking. It could also be a gamma issue. Um, the other reason I wanted you to look at this is this: the ones that look more neutral gray on every step are the ones that are tracking gray better. And that has something to do with color accuracy, obviously. So. I'll, I'll use green because your eye sees green better than it sees any other color. And so when there's a green arrow, your grandma with cataracts will pick it up like that <laughs> because she'll see her grandkids' skin tone green and go, what's that? You know, anybody can see it. Um, let's see, maybe green game zero. What is the next item on the list? Uh, motion. Moving resolution. Okay, that's our that's final final item, and uh, we'll switch over to the other Blu-ray player, which we set up to output 1080i. We have a, a test disc in there made by Silicon Optics called the, it's called the HQV Benchmark uh, Blu-ray test disc. And there's two patterns in there. One is a video uh, resolution loss pattern, which we'll start with. And that'll show you how it handles 1080i HD video, which would be, you know, the Yankees in high def or any sporting event that was shot in high def video. And then we'll move to the next one, which is film loss resolution, which would be any film-based material that's then transferred to 1080i that you'd be looking at on your cable or your satellite system. And you'll see clearly the ones that are handling it correctly. It's very stable. You see everything and others you'll see some motion artifacts and some problems in some of these patterns. Um, and then we'll we'll get to showing you some pictures, some reference quality Blu-ray movie pictures afterwards. Now we need the uh, Remember correctly, I think most of them do, if not all of them, handle yeah. this well. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty well, yeah. Pretty much across the board. You see some yeah. weird artifact in the Samsung when it's spinning, it's splitting out, closing in, splitting out. You get the little jaggies on the bar, but yeah. it gets within 10 or 20 degrees of horizontal. Yeah. The other thing to look at is color. This is a black and white test pattern, right? So. If we have discoloration in any of these squares, that's an indication of a slight roll off of high frequency video. Mm -hmm. They should be all neutral gray. Everything on here should be neutral gray. So if you see a little bit of color in here, it's not quite right. That's a minor thing, it's not huge, but. Is that something you can overcome when you're calibrating by tweaking down that color? No, that's, that's, a, that's a, a slight loss of resolution we're seeing. It's a video processing issue. And these are all doing a, a nice job on this. They're not, maybe they're not all exactly perfect, but this is pretty good performance from everybody in the room. Now, let's take a look and see how it handles film. How they handle film. Is this actual film that shot, or is it video? This was video. Right. Is this so film coming up? We're going to do film now. Exactly. Because they are different. Okay. Same test pattern, just different source. This is a 1080p at 24? It's 1080i. 
Yeah. So what, what this represents is, how is it handling the high def movie you're watching on Showtime on your cable system, oh, wow. which was transferred from a film element to video? You see what I mean? So it's not the Blu-ray you're watching. No, this yeah. is not the, the player. What, when you set a player to 1080i, the deinterlacing is now being done by the display. And that's what we're looking at. We're looking at the deinterlacing capability of the processing built into these TVs. And you can see that they're not all the same. And what we want to see is a stable image. You want to see absolutely a stable image. So we have a couple of them that are a little on the shaky side. This is terrific. Very, very cool. Wow. That's remarkable. Actually, you know, several years ago, um, it was a rampant major problem where fully 50 or 60 percent of all the HD TVs sold in the market were doing something called bob and weave, uh, which is basically throwing 50 percent of the vertical resolution of a 1080i signal out the window. It was a real major problem. And it was a journalist, uh, Gary Merson, who actually cracked the story and tested, I don't know, I can't even remember, a lot of different TVs. and came out and said, you know, this, that, and the other one is doing the bob and weave and beware. Um, it's not as big a problem as it used to be, but it's still something to look for. I mean, just to make note on some of the LCD sets, the 240 hertz uh, frame interpolation is turned on, so some of that... That could be affecting the pattern. That's right. So there's many settings you can play with to try to straighten that pattern out, but now if you go to a different uh, interlace input or progressive, you may have to change the settings back again to optimize it. Yeah, th this whole 120, 240 uh, judder reduction, etc., 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 is a it's a fairly complex thing, and um, you know there there <laughs> nobody's doing it exactly perfectly yet that I know of. Um, there are a variety of different artifacts that can be created in the process of implementing any one of those things. So. 